to another Daily Devo. I hope your day is just going splendidly. I know my day has been a pretty good day. It's a good day at church this morning here, and this afternoon has actually been pretty chill. I can look outside my window right behind you guys, and it is snowing outside where I'm at. So who knows what the rest of this week is going to hold with that. But nevertheless, it's a perfect day to do a Daily Devo. Now, before we get into our judges study, like we're going to get into here, I was learning that a few of my students were actually watching these Daily Devos. And so if you are watching one of my students, I am going to give you a treat on Sunday. If you repeat to me the title of today's Daily Devo. So that's the only way you're going to be able to get this treat. I will have them for you Sunday, but you just need to make sure when you see me, you repeat to me whatever the title is of this Daily Devo. Okay? That's just a special thing for you students. Anyways, for everybody else and including you students, let's go ahead and get back on to today's Daily Devo. Well, today we are going to be in Judges chapter 10. And I'll be honest, as I was studying Judges chapter 10, there was two different messages I want to get out across it. Actually, I just had to stop the video earlier because I was going with the other message, but I felt like God was wanting me to do this one instead. So who knows, we might get to that second message some other time. But today, I really want to share this message that unfolds in verses 13 and 14. So let me go ahead and read those verses for you, and I'll explain kind of the background and really where we're getting at after I read these verses. So again, this is in Judges chapter 10, looking at verses 13 and 14. It says, Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Therefore, I will save you no more. Go and cry out to the gods whom you have chosen. Let them save you in your time of distress. So this needs some explaining. But what we see here is this is actually God talking to his people. And it seems really unique and weird how he would even say it like this. But if you are familiar at all with the book of Judges, like maybe we've explained here before, the typical trend inside the book of Judges would be that the people of God would go away from God and serve these other gods and do all these other things for other gods. And they would leave their God, leave the real God just out to dry. And then something bad would happen. An invading country would come in. They'd be in a lot of distress. And they would cry out to God. And God would answer them and send them some sort of leader to help them get out of the stress that they're in. But here we're seeing this story. Now we're kind of unfolding into this situation. They've again followed this pattern of just leaving God, doing their own thing, worshiping another God. Bad situation came in. Now they're crying out to God. And here we're seeing God's response, which seemingly is a little different than the normal one. Now he's saying, you're crying out to me once again, but you have done this so many times. Now your response is going to be this. I am not going to come save you. You go and cry out to these other gods whom seemingly you want to go after and see how they will take care of you. Now, I want you to know this just in a few verses down. It says, like in verse 16, it says, you know, he became impatient over the misery of Israel. So God did come through for them. He did come and he wasn't just saying, forget you. That's what it almost seems like it's saying. So why did God respond in the way that he did? Why did God look at his people who were crying out to help for him and say, go somewhere else? Well, here's the real reason why. It's not because God wanted just to do away with them and didn't want anything to do with them anymore. It wasn't that God said, well, you've had enough chances. If that's the case, that can be kind of scary for us to think that's the same sort of God we serve. No, the reason why he did this was he wanted them to see for themselves just how real those other gods were. In fact, because he wanted them to see that just how real, meaning that they're not real at all. Because what we're seeing here is God is saying, I want you to go test out for yourselves. So often you have gone and served these other gods because they can take care of you and they can bless you and they can do all these other things. But what you're not realizing is that those aren't real gods at all. There's only one God, which is me. And what God is saying, I want you to see just how fake those gods are. Those real gods that you have inside your life right now, the ones you keep going after, if you can go after them in the good times, I want you to see just how real they are when you really need them most. And so what God was trying to let them do, he was wanting them to see for themselves that these aren't real gods at all. 
and he wanted to give them an opportunity to see just how real he was and how fake they were. And so the message I wanted to give to you here is sometimes God might do the same in our story too. Because we might be in a time of distress because we have gone after all these other things. Other things that maybe it's not other gods, but we have trusted in ourselves. Trusted in some sort of substance to take care of us. Trusted in some sort of person. And then things haven't gone going well. We're in a time of distress. We're going in a bad way. Things just aren't working out real well. And we cry out to God in the middle of that spot that we're in. And sometimes God will say, well, you know what? I'm going to let you test out for yourselves. I'm going to let you see for yourselves just how helpful those things are. Now, God still will always come through for us. He will always take care of us just like we see inside this story. Very quickly, God took care of them and showed them his mercy and showed them his grace. But God really does want you to learn that turning to anything else other than him is not going to help you. He's going to give you experiences and opportunities for you to learn those hard lessons. And as much as maybe God doesn't want to have to put you through that, God will allow it. So that you can learn just how real of a God he is and how fake of a God those other things are. Because we can put our trust and hope in so many other things other than God. But in the end, what we're going to find out is the only one that can be there for us in the good times and the bad times is the one true God. And so that's going to be my encouragement to you today is let's make sure today, even if you're in a very good time right now, let's make sure that we are putting our trust and our hope in the one real God. Because what we're going to find out is when things get going and things get rough and things are bad, the only one that we can turn to that will truly help us is the one true God. Let's make sure that we're not putting our hope and putting our faith in other things other than God because when we need God most, we want to make sure that we can come to him and he will come to us too. So let's make sure that we are running to the true real God right here, right now in the good times and in the bad times. So today, I hope that message was a little bit encouraging for you here today. I'm going to go ahead and pray for you and we'll get out of here. Father, I want to say thank you so much for today. We truly do love you, and we thank you for all your love. We just pray that this message was glorifying to you and that you can use it. In your name I pray. Amen. Well, hey, guys, as always, I want you to know Jesus loves you, and thanks for watching. See ya.